What's up chess player? Today we are gonna unbox this chess knight pro giant chess set and I'm gonna share with you my real time honest emotions and tell you my honest opinion whether you should get it and how I plan to use it in my journey to Grandmaster. First of all, big thank you to Chestnut Company for providing me with such a board that's going to be very helpful in my journey because I enjoy using the Chestnut uh, boards for my preparation, for my trainings. I have already made uh, reviews about Chestnut Air and Chestnut Evo. The links are going to be in the description if you like to take a look at those boards. But this one is like a pro version for well, real guys who want to achieve their chess goals. First of all, we have the quick guide, which is pretty much the same as I remember from Chestnut Airboard. Then we have the pieces itself. Let me show it to you. Yeah, so the first impressions are really good about those pieces. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really that guy who is gonna here find all of the small details and say that, well, I don't like the material or whatever. For me, as a regular chess player, I'm not like a big pro in the topic of the entire like material stuff and so on. For me, pieces are uh, feeling absolutely normal. I'm used to something like that in the tournaments. Of course, I, I need to take a look at it in a, on the board to express my full opinion, so let me do that. We have here the charging cable, as always, type C. That is fantastic. That is a model cable. Then we can just remove the pieces from here. Wow, they're really making sure that we don't lose any of the quality. Let me just somehow find enough place here. Yeah, that is as always something you don't need to eat. And let me find the board itself. Wow, that's I already feel that it's incredibly heavy. It's not a board you want to take with you every time you go to a chess club or to a chess tournament. It's rather a board you want to have at home, use it for your trainings or if your friends are coming and wants to play with it. That's how it looks. Let me remove this, this thing. So here is how the board looks like. Okay, that feels good. They never have notation on the chestnut boards and like for me it doesn't make any difference because well I'm not really using it but for the people who are just starting playing chess like my girlfriend for example she has difficulties she doesn't have a notation and then it's difficult for her to understand what is actually going on let me know in the comments whether it's important for you because I think you could just make some notations here but maybe they think it's not that beautiful uh, in terms of board design so they don't use it. okay let me bring all of the pieces to the board Okay, I'm finally done and yeah, my impression is really good just as I expected because it really feels like the pieces and the boards I'm used to as a tournament player. So that is the main thing for me to have at home this feeling of like being in a tournament hall and once I'm preparing, once I do my trainings, to have that feeling that as if I'm in a real tournament hall situation. I really like the quality of the board itself because it's all very very clear that's what i really like i don't like this green chess uh, board on chess.com like why on earth it should be green i, I have never understood it here it, it's not like completely black and i don't like it that way but i really enjoy the colors and the pieces are also absolutely fine in the size of real tournament uh, pieces so it gives you the entire feeling exactly what i am aiming, aiming for what i was hoping for to get with this board now, I have heard uh, some uh, expert opinion about the like quality of the wood they use, uh, that it's not like that very expensive um, type of wood or whatever. For me, like just my honest opinion, I am not an expert in that, so I'm not gonna comment that. I don't feel the difference between like just normal pieces and very expensive pieces. So if you want that information, uh, feel free to take a look at their website and you see the exact uh, material they are using. But for me, it just feels like a very normal chess pieces, wood pieces that I can use for my training that are very similar to the tournament situation. Now here on, the, on this side of the board, you have uh, just as you have in the uh, chestnut air. Yeah, but I see there are some small differences, but 
In general, the interface is the same. You have this uh, uh, cable to uh, charge the, bo the board. You have a few buttons to, uh, to switch it on and off. Uh, the in indicators for Bluetooth, for power, and to connect it to the well, what we really need it for, to connect it to chess.com, to lead chess, and once I'm ready here charging the board and uh, uh, understanding how it all works, I'm gonna be back playing the game using this board because otherwise it's just a normal, normal board and it's too expensive for that. We really need to make sure it works online. Welcome back. I have got quite a lot of time testing the board. And now I want to show you how it works action. I'm gonna go to chess.com using the Chestnuts app uh, specifically for the, all of the products they have. I already have quite a few, so I can connect all of them into the same app. Works fantastically. Then I'm just logging into my chess.com account, which I did. And here we can just play a new game. Make, of course, like if you play a three minute game, that would be quite a big disadvantage comparing to your opponent. But let's play a 10 minute game and let's see whether we are able to cope with the time because of course uh, we need to make uh, to, to have some additional time to make moves for our opponent. Anyway, the board seems to be connected. We are playing against a very strong player from India. So let me just make the move. Okay, D4, I have nine minutes, 52 seconds and 25 moves seems to work i can play just uh, looking at the board i don't need to necessarily watch on the phone only if i need to check how uh, much time uh, is left then i need to take a look there of course you can use the laptop instead of the uh, mobile phone it's up to you but of course the good thing is you don't need to spend additional time to uh, press the clock like you do in real time chess here you can just you can just focus on the game and make the move. Okay, my opponent is playing knight c6. I need to focus a little, little bit on the game too, not to, and not to be embarrassed. Bishop to b4. I never liked this idea when you play knight c6 before playing c5. To me, it feels very, very passive because well, the c pawn doesn't really fight for the center. It's not putting any pressure. And also it's like uh, creating difficulties in terms of finishing your development. This bishop on c8 is just awful. But probably my opponent has an idea. I guess queen c2 is a normal move. Here, maybe he's gonna take on c4 and play b5, uh, thanks to the pin. But let's say I don't care, I just want to get the full control of the center. Yeah, that's what he does. Now I have to play e3 because my pawn is hanging. But yeah, probably b5 is not... Not such a simple idea. Yeah, he goes for it. Maybe I should have just, you know, play a3 and normally without going into this stuff, but let's just play a3 and get the pair of bishops. I really like to play the pair of bishops no matter what in chess, and hopefully here I can prove it to you that it's a really great thing to have it. Okay, now I have a choice. I really want to take with the queen because that creates an additional threat of playing b3. As you can see, all of the moves are working very smoothly. I pretty much don't lose any time just for this one thing to make the move for my opponent because physically I need to do that. That is wasting some time. Okay, what about the move a4? Because I'm going to attack the pawn and you cannot play a6 because I'm going to take on b5 and there is a, there is a pin. So... You're gonna lose the whole rook if you take it back. Okay, let me play a4 then. He has knight d5, but yeah, knight d5 is a bit annoying because queen c2 was my initial idea, but you have knight, knight to b4 and I'm gonna lose more tempi. So maybe I'm gonna play queen to d2 instead, kind of preparing the move e4. Queen a3 is another idea, just blocking the castles, but the problem is he plays b4 with another tempo and then protects the c4 pawn. That's not gonna be great. So queen d2 be my choice. But yeah, probably I have given him too much of initiative. I shouldn't have done that. But still, okay, he takes on a4. I even <laughs> looked at the screen because I was, I hear the sound of capturing, but I'm, I'm very surprised to see this move because now I can just take the c4 pawn and this guy is going to be hanging. So. 
and the end of the day you just have this c7 pawn okay the material is equal but i have a full control of the center i quite like it maybe the idea is that i cannot just capture two pawns because he's gonna play knight b6 okay let me take this one because this is the most important pawn and we are playing without the increment so i, I should not talk too much and instead play faster not to get into time trouble Even in mind that disadvantage as well. I like the move bishop b5 because that is basically forcing him to play bishop d7 instead of bishop b7. On b7, of course, the bishop is more uh, more active. But if he plays bishop b7 now, then I have knight d5, queen c2. Wait, he actually goes for it. Ah, maybe, maybe I have an underestimated queen to d5 because not only that protects the the knight on c6 it also attacks my bishop and i don't have another way to attack it and stop um stop the attack from him as well okay knight d5 queen d5 maybe i have queen b4 stopping the castles but somehow g2 is hanging yeah queen c3 queen d5 queen to five i don't even don't even have queen to a4 unfortunately maybe i have queen c2 queen d5 queen to c5 stopping the castles blocking the attack yeah but he still has a6 I don't create any threats yeah if i don't have anything then the bishop is just useless i could have just played bishop d3 immediately in that case that's a bit annoying. I can just exchange everything with knight 5 and knight takes e6, but I hope to get more than that. Doesn't seem to be the case. Then let's me let me play queen to c2. Just attack that guy, and after queen to d5, I want to play queen to c5. He plays a6. I want to exchange those queens. And he has to take with the pawn, or just lose the pawn on a4, just like that. And if he takes with the pawn, then his bishop is going to be very stupid there. That's my hope. Let's see if I succeed with that. Yeah, we actually have a pretty interesting position here. But like I said in the beginning, I don't like this c pawn being behind the knight there. Very, very passive. Would be much better for him if the pawn would be on c5, exchange on d4, play rook to c8, have another at uh, attacker or defender for the knight on c6, and an active rook. But, well, our main stuff here, using the Chestnut Pro, you can see that works fantastically. You have a full-size uh, tournament board, so it really feels like I'm uh, playing a tournament game, and the feeling is amazing, I can sincerely tell you that. Okay, Queen to c5. And of course, I feel very excited every time I see the board around, because it kind of inspires me to, uh, you know, grab a book, start... Uh, start uh, going over some exercises, start working or just playing. This feeling is amazing. Okay, he actually castles loan, which at the same time protects the queen. That is a very clever idea. Fortunately, I kind of missed it. I mean, that's not a big deal. But what do I do? I guess I'm still not afraid of takes. What I'm afraid of is the move a6. Although I can still take on if. Then let me just castle. And see what happens. Yeah, but it's difficult for me in this situation to use my bis two bishops' advantage because at some point I need to, to grab that pawn on a4 back and then he takes my bishop. We have opposite colors bishops, which is not that great. Also, I'm low on time, so let me speed up here. Remember, please, if you're interested in buying any of uh, Chestnut products, this board, or Chestnut Evo, which I use so often in my videos, or Chestnut Air, their most affordable option, you have a, an opportunity to get a huge discount thanks to the link in the description as well as the promo code Journey to Grand Master. But yeah, I'm trying to find a way here to create difficulties for him, and it's not simple. Let's just develop the pieces Bishop d2, Brooks to c1. Because if I manage to play rook c1 and nothing happens, then once again I create the threat. That would be really great. Yeah, he doesn't give me that chance. He fortunately just plays the move a6. And now I have to take the decision. 
If I take on c6, I'm going to be a pawn down, but I still get to play rook c1, but it doesn't really help. No, I need to take. I'm just thinking whether I need to exchange the queens first. Probably I should to get this c file open still and maybe create some troubles for him. Because otherwise he's gonna take my queen and then I'm taken with the pawn and the file is blocked and he gets gets the open file there. He actually takes with the pawn, wow. I was very surprised by that because now the bishop is absolutely stupid. That's to my eyes is just a strategical mistake. I don't like this decision at all. Now he takes, I take it back, he has weakness there. On a6 he has this uh, weak file. Yes, he gets some play on the king side, but hopefully that's nothing. C1. Now the question is, how do I create any real difficulties for him? That's another point. Maybe I relocate my knight all the way to c5. What do you think about this idea? Because he doesn't really expect to get some checkmating ideas, or I'm not sure without the queens, it's not really possible. But he goes for it. Yeah, I, I'm gonna just ignore it. Sometimes the best strategy is just to ignore your problem, and it turns out to be not such a huge problem at all. Okay, but I need to find a way to create threats, because even if I play knight to c5 and take the bishop, he just takes it back and everything seems to be protected. It's not that simple. Maybe I should relocate my rook, rook a3 and rook c3. It feels a little bit slow, I know that, but... At least I get to create a threat and double my rooks. Three. Yeah, at this point I feel like I should just play g3. Not to allow him to open up the h file, because then he really gets to create some threats. Knight goes back. Okay, wait. Actually, after knight c5 I do have a threat. I attack the a6 pawn. I really forgot about that. And I really need to speed up. I have less than 3 minutes at this point. So, rook d6. Ah, okay, that's smart. But I have bishop to b4 now. Activating even more pieces you always want. It doesn't matter whether it's opening, middle game, end game. You always want to activate as many pieces as possible. Because after rook b6, I had an idea to grab the bishop and then the knight on his side is hanging. Okay, now I want just to. Play rook a1. Once again, I create a threat of attacking the pawn. And knight b7, bishop c uh, e7 is also an idea. That's why he protects. But I guess I can still grab the pawn, right? Checkmate. Oh, checkmate. Oh, let me take. Hopefully, I'm still in time to win the game in the end of the day. Because with an extra pawn, yes, the knights are very tricky when you have very limited time. I understand that. Rook c2. Okay, now knight to c5 back creates a checkmate threat, rook a8. Maybe I should have... Yeah, wait a second. Yeah, I should have just taken the knight on e7 first, exchanged that. And then I have a very powerful knight against a very bad bishop. In fact, yeah, that should have been winning. Kind of because now my bishop is also pretty passive. I thought I need this bishop. Wait, he makes a move, but not really. Okay, now let me relocate the knight again, maybe. Because I don't see what I can do there. Knight d3. First of all, I can just catch this rook, just knight e1, rook e2, and king f1, and I don't see any way for him to defend it. And secondly, I have some ideas like knight f4, just attacking the d5 pawn. He has so many weaknesses, but this rook on c2 really seems like it's in prison now, and I'm ready to catch it. I have less than two minutes. Let's see if I am able to do that. I don't see any way for him to stop my idea. a6 square is under control, so bishop a6 is not an option. Otherwise, I'm just winning the rook. Basically, he has to sacrifice it either for the knight or for the bishop. Yes, he decides to drop the knight. And now the only question is whether I have enough time using the chestnut pro board here to 
win the game. Okay, so my idea is b4, b5, just to get as active as possible. b7, so let's go. Then the knights should go away. I have rook a7, maybe bishop a5, rook c1, just attacking that on as much as I can. I have 1 minute 30 seconds. Let me know in the comments, please, whether you think I'm going to be able to win this game or not. I should be 4. Yeah, now this knight, although if the knight goes to b6, then I'm gonna play rook a7 with the tempo. F5. Okay. Rook c1. Actually, bishop before wasn't really necessary because I want to play bishop a5. And rook c5, by the way, what was an idea, still is. Do I take? Let's play rook b4 for now. One minute, ten seconds. I really need to be fast. Now he takes, I have rook c7, so he basically cannot take. I did six. Take. Takes. And. B6. Wait, there is knight c4. Thank god I still have rook a6. But yeah, it's still not simple at all. The position is very closed. It's very difficult to take advantage of, of the extra change. I need to play bishop c5, rook b1, and bring the second rook. 50 seconds. One. Now I'm ready for rook a7, rook b8. King f6, let's play rook b8 immediately. And maybe rook c8 is on my agenda. Especially now. Rook d7 seems to be the only move. Okay, let's play rook f8. Maybe bishop e7 and rook f6. But probably it's time for me to bring the king. Twenty nine seconds, wow. How do I break through actually? Seven, let's play f3. I also need to be careful with the knight. Take. No, I guess I'm not going to be able to make it in time. I need to bring my king and create some checkmate threats, but really tough to do that. So fast. Well, now I have e4. There's a chance. Yeah, I'm kind of panicking now because of the time. Oops, there is a fork. Very annoying. Just two seconds. Maybe I should have focused on limiting his material instead. Yeah, anyway, I have lost some time. So you can see if you have very limited time, it's very difficult to handle it and you are much slower than with an actual board. So you rather need to be focused on the rapid games like 10 plus 10, 15 plus 10, and then basically I have almost no problems. As long as you play fast and strong, this is working very good. But well, I can say anything bad about Chestnut Pro itself. It was me who played too slow but the moves were made precisely and very fast so you could have seen that it works very good besides playing against real people on chess.com or lead chess of course you have the opportunity to play uh, against the computer with chess nuts well it's a chess computer after all so i'm playing here against level number five and uh, i have tried it before it plays very very good i have to admit so let's see whether i can defeat it this time e6 it goes to c3 and it makes the moves just automatically like so fast you can't even imagine that makes it even more impressive taking on d5 but you can actually adjust that 
you can uh, make it you can make the computer think like three seconds on every move or five seconds on every move they have recently added this update but even like that it's playing very very strong i have to say and and the top level of the computer level number eight plays so incredibly strong so you definitely get a very good opponent here. It's a very good opportunity to prepare against the tournament. You take a real uh, tournament size board, you play against an incredibly strong opponent, or you can choose the level that you need to prepare against your uh, level of, of opponents. And that's fantastic one. Like you don't need anything, you just play the game. And then very important, you of course analyze and you can uh, definitely do that with the help of Chestnut Pro together with the engine. First, without the engine, that would be my recommendation. And then with the engine to see where you made the mistakes. I mean, that is a fantastic way, the fastest way to improve your chess. So, yeah, this is the Taras defense. And I guess there are different options. Should G5? Is that how you play here? I always confuse it. There are different moves. If you take on C5, they play D4. But if you play bishop g5, they play c4, and also not a big fan of that. Let me just take on c5, see what happens. Going to be sharp. Okay, he just takes it back. Yeah, that is of course also an option. You are not necessarily, not necessarily you need to play uh, d4 immediately. But now I get to play bishop g5, kind of with the tempo, because after d4 I have knight to e4. Plays bishop e6, but now I hope to play rook to c1, continuing my development and preparing some attack. He plays bishop to e7. So you see the moves with the help of those indicators. I guess they have done it a little bit better, a little bit more clear on Chestnut Evil, the board I use so often in my videos, because there you have four indicators all over the square to see uh, the move. Now you have just one, but taking into account the fact that the board is so big, it's still pretty easy to, to see all of the moves and comfortable to play without looking at the screen. Okay, now I get the control of the d4 square. I guess it's very important. If you, your opponent has a isolated pawn, always try to block it with a knight. So let me play knight b5 and place my knight on d4. Rook c8. Yeah, see no reason not to do it. Knight e4. He is allowing me to get to bishop's advantage with knight xe6, but then he has those pawns together. Let me just take. Suppose he's gonna take with the queen and then play something like queen a4. Just continue my development. Because actually, the more pieces you trade, the simpler it is to attack this isolated pawn. Now I want to play. Yeah. Although I can just ignore it, I can still play rook d1. Knight d4, I have queen d4. Maybe he has other jumps like knight b4, but then I have queen takes a7, right? Or knight e5, I also have queen a7. So let me do that. Does? Oh, okay, I actually missed the move rook e8. Um, yeah. That's an interesting idea, but maybe I can just play e3. Knight is still protected. Oh my god, knight takes f2. I completely missed that. Am I already losing? Knight takes e6 is unfortunately not an option. He has bishop takes e6 and, and then everything is hanging. So always, always consider all of the capture opportunities. And that's, by the way, um, something you quite often miss when you play against computers, those attacking opportunities. I still am not sure that I'm losing here. So now I have just only moved king to f1. Okay, knight d4. Now it's really time to calculate the lines. First of all, queen takes. Ah, wait. I understand why I'm losing. The rook on c1 is just hanging. Twice. There is. There is this very, very annoying check. 
like queen takes d4, rook c1, queen takes d3, he has rook takes d1 first, and then king e2, rook takes d3, and I am an exchange down, and two pawns down. I mean, why is he playing so strong? That's very annoying. I cannot do anything here. But okay, well, thank God it's not like a rated game, I'm not losing anything here, but you can already see that even level number five is very difficult to to beat. Yeah, let's let's just make sure he knows his stuff. Ah, okay, there is even bishop b5. It's even worse than that. And I'm completely busted. It's checkmate immediately. Okay, he deserved it. But of, of course, the most important point was here to show you how you can play with the help of Chestnut the Pro. And of course, the greatest thing is all of the games you play here are saved. Uh, let me just try to resign and show it to you. And here, of course, I can share the game if I want. Well, not this one, because I'm very embarrassed with this one. But uh, I can share it uh, when I play a good one, or maybe just use it to share with me so that I can take a look from the computer. Or I can analyze the game uh, to understand where I made my mistakes. It's pretty clear here, this knight f2 was out of the sky for me, I haven't thought about it at all, but I hope you get a very good impression of what you get with Chestnut Pro. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Of course, the board is quite pricey. I, I can definitely understand if it's not really available at this point for you, but you get a very generous discount with the link in the description or with the Journey to Grandmaster coupon code. Definitely use that if you're interested in buying one of the boards. By the way, you get the discount with a coupon or with a link, not only for this particular board, Chestnut Pro, but all of the boards from the Chestnut company, Chestnut Evo, Chestnut Air, Chestnut Air Plus, by the way, I'm gonna make a review of the Chestnut Air Plus board very soon. So definitely take a look at that one because this one is much more affordable, also simpler to travel with it. So if you're interested in that, it's gonna come soon. Otherwise, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps a lot to promote the video and let other people see it. And just thank you very much for being with me today. I really hope to improve your chess. I have so many videos on the channel to help you improve your chess level. But in this video, you're gonna see the full review of Chestnut Evo, the most innovative uh, chess board I have ever seen in my life. I'm happy to use it pretty much every day, so definitely take a look if you're interested.